Close your eyes. Looks like old code. It feels really familiar. Drop a pin. I'll signal for backup. I'm gonna check it out. Bugs, if the general finds out we've been fishing... A quick peek can't hurt. Did you hear that? Shit, I think our signal was traced. Bugs, this feels like a trap. <gasps> I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people who you don't want them to see. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Go, go. Close your eyes. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. There's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. You're a monkey. Yeah, that's right, you're a monkey. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, 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 ah. According to the scientists, you know, scientism, the religion of atheists, you're a monkey. Yeah, you're no different from a monkey. You came from an ape. That's what they're telling us. In fact, there's a big, big story on Drudge Report today. There's a monkey skull that they allegedly found, and they say that that's where we came from. We're all monkeys, we're just a bunch of apes. And uh, also, the scientific community says that we came from nothing. That's right, there was a blob of goo. It's kind of just like this muck of mud. They don't know where it came from, it wasn't alive. It was just kind of this gooey sludge stuff. It exploded randomly. It's magical, it's, it was magic. It exploded and created this vast cellular universe of planets and stars and all of these ecosystems that, by the way, are completely and unarguably intelligently designed. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. You're a monkey. Yeah, that's right, you're a monkey. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, 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 ah. According to the scientists you know scientism the religion of atheists you're a monkey yeah you're no different from a monkey you came from an ape that's what they're telling us
Again, is it possible that we've been lied to our entire lives, that everything is a lie, even the basic truths of how the Earth functions? Let me give you another example. You know how they teach you in school while they're programming you and brainwashing you right after you come out of your mom's womb and the ward that makes up the public school system? They tell you about all the different layers of the planet Earth. They say it's a sphere, allegedly. And they say there's multiple layers, like a mantle and then different layers of the planet, all the way to what they call a magnum core, right? It's like a volcano down there. It's really red hot. It's what created the poles and all the magnetism of the North and South Poles. How do they know that? Because they've never dug more than eight miles into the Earth. Fact. So it's actually just conjecture. No one's been to the core of the Earth. No one's even gotten past eight miles. So how do they know what's inside the planet itself? What I know, because again, you probably know tuning in as a critical thinker, is what I see with my own eyes is an incredible, amazing, beautiful, intelligent design. Whether or not it's the beautiful, intelligent design of human consciousness, thought, and self-awareness, or it is the beautiful design and consciousness of nature itself. In fact, if things weren't designed so perfectly and intricately the way that they currently are, there would be no life. But isn't that the point? of the secular religious ideology that makes up Darwinism, evolution, and all these various topics that they don't even allow you to have common discourse on. You know, what they're selling is this. You came from nothing. You are nothing. You're completely insignificant. You're a goo that exploded in an ape in a vast, endless, infinite universe spinning on a freaking ball at a little bit of a tilt with endless stars and other planets and things that we've never even seen before because no one's actually been there. In fact, all independent research of sending balloon satellites up into the sky show what? Flat horizon. The horizon actually rises with the eye of the viewer. You don't have to look down. Why is it that railroads, when they're built, don't account, the engineering blueprints don't account for the alleged curvature of the Earth. If you're building a bridge miles and miles and miles long, let's say in Key West, wouldn't you have to account for the alleged sphere of the Earth? How come airplanes that fly crisscross around the country don't also have to account for aviation changes and altitude changes on the curvature of the Earth? If the Earth is allegedly curved, wouldn't the plane have to go a little bit nose down every you know, several miles that it's flying to compensate? If the Earth is allegedly spinning a thousand plus miles per hour, and the average Boeing 747 flies 500 miles per hour, wouldn't the Earth be spinning faster than the plane itself and eventually catch up to it if let's say the plane was flying east? You know, when you begin asking these fundamental questions, You'll begin to understand that most of what you get on all the topics I just discussed, and believe me, there's many more, are disinformation campaigns. You wanna know the biggest disinformation campaign? The Flat Earth Society. It's controlled opposition by the deep state. To make people that even consider these scientific inquiry seem insane. So what, we're just supposed to take NASA's word for it? I tell you what, one thing that NASA's done a great, great job of is collecting billions and billions of dollars from the American taxpayer slave. And all we got is one alleged moon landing, and we've never been back. But they're gonna colonize Mars. That's what they're telling us. So we live in this world where the AI is taking over, and I'm just telling you to look into this stuff, folks. I'm not telling you to believe me. I'm not telling you to believe NASA. I'm telling you to critically think. How much in your life of your current reality do you just take for granted? Well, I don't know. I don't understand that math paradigm. I don't understand that blueprint or engineering, so I'm just not gonna think about it and even try. There's someone else that understands this kind of thing. It's like the tax code today. 
It's so complicated that it reaches a certain point where you're like, well, I don't know, hands off. There's professionals that do this kinds of thing, right? It's not like the IRS would overcharge me or anything like that. See, it makes perfect sense. Confusion is the ally of the deep state. It's why they want your children's minds so early. They want to brainwash them as soon as possible. It's also why public schooling is free, and one of the first things your kid, or student, really your inmate, is taught is the alleged spherical Earth. That again, Neil deGrasse Tyson says is more like a pear. He says it's heavier down at the bottom, like a, like a big, fat pear. That's what he says. Well, then why aren't all the images that I see allegedly from NASA not the shape of a pear? And all they do, instead of having intellectual scientific debate, right, critical thinking, all they do is belittle and launch their own misinformation campaigns. And they're lauded as the authority. Well, what if the authorities were wrong? What if their agenda was simply to control you? To make you believe that you're insignificant, that there is nothing else out there. And it's just you randomly on this blob of goo that transitions somehow, even though there's no fossils, from goo to a fish in the sea, to gills, to chimpanzees, to, I mean, this is the most ridiculous, idiotic theory I've ever heard in my entire life. Look at the dinosaurs. They tell us something different every single day. How they got here, when they left, how they became extinct. They didn't know before and then now it's a comet. They don't know anything. Just like Pluto is no longer a planet, even though they said it was a planet not too long ago. They know absolutely nothing. They've dumbed down the American people to such a degree that they can't think for themselves. They're not thinking clearly and they're not truly understanding their current reality. Again, I'm not saying that I know everything because I certainly don't. I'm asking you to critically think. I'm asking you to think for yourself. Is the world a sphere? Is it a globe? Do you feel like you're moving on this planet? Because I don't. It seems pretty stationary. When I look at the horizon, it looks flat. In fact, they actually thought the world was flat for thousands of years before they came up with the theory that it was a sphere. So maybe it is flat, maybe it isn't. Maybe this truly is the Truman Show and we all live in a dome. Many ancient civilizations thought just that. And not only did these same ancient civilizations sacrifice thousands and millions of children to the gods, it's still being done here in the United States of America under the authority of secret societies that really rule the world. Jeffrey Epstein, just one example, a convicted pedophile who got away with it. How many more of these scumbags are walking scot-free in Washington, D.C., in the depths of cities and countries all across the flat earth? I'm Christopher Green. Get this video out everywhere. Make it viral, hard-hitting and in your face. The most important thing to realize, and most obvious way to know you are not spinning on a ball, is your own common sense and lived experience. You have always, and will always, experience yourself as living right side up on a motionless earth, with the sun, moon, and stars revolving over and around you. This is common sense, and what everyone in the world personally experiences every day of their lives. We are taught to believe otherwise, however, many things completely contrary to our own common sense and experience from a very early age. We are told that people living down under the spinning ball earth in Australia are actually living upside down relative to those residing in the northern hemisphere, while an invisible force 
strong enough to hold people, buildings, and oceans stuck to the underside of a rapidly rotating ball, but weak enough to allow birds, bugs, and planes to take off and fly with ease, keeps Earth's atmosphere spinning in perfect balance, and holds everyone firmly to the surface without crushing us. We can clearly see that the horizon is horizontal, but we are told it curves. We can feel that the Earth under our feet is motionless, but we are told it moves. We can observe the luminaries revolving around us, but we are told it is us that revolves. It is obvious that stars are stars, but we are told that stars are suns. We can see the sun is bigger than the stars, but we are told stars are bigger than the sun. We can see the sun and moon are the same size, but we are told the sun is 400 times larger. It is obvious that up is up and down is down, but we are told there is no such thing. will always remain horizontal. This fundamental physical property of water is why it has been used as a leveling tool by builders and engineers for millennia. Whether in a bucket, bathtub, pond, lake, or an ocean, the surface of water at rest always remains flat and doesn't have the ability to show convexity or any shape whatsoever upon its surface. This fact is easily demonstrable and empirically verifiable but completely at odds with what we are told about the globe. For Earth to be globular, and over 70% covered in water, the oceans must be somehow curving around and sticking to all sides of a rapidly spinning ball suspended in space. It is simply impossible to make water behave this way, as anyone can experiment for themselves. Bodies of water will not stick to the underside of a ball, and cannot show convexity or any other shape upon their surface. Globe defenders will often point to water droplets, meniscus, surface tension, or adhesion, claiming these are examples of water bending or sticking to a surface, which is nothing but a fallacy of false equivalency, as these only happen at a very small scale, the size of a coffee cup. The claim is entire oceans wrapping around and sticking to the underside of a spinning ball, not a water droplet or the meniscus in a glass filled to the brim. NASA has also recently taken to faking CGI water balls using augmented virtual reality technology in an attempt to convince the public that water can behave this way. This kind of demonstration, done in a reference frame inaccessible to 99.99% .99 of the population, however, is unrepeatable by the world's scientists and skeptics and is therefore not scientific or permissible as proof of anything. First, they claim only massive objects the size of Earth have this attractive property. Then, as evidence, they show a phenomenon allegedly outside of our earthly reference frame. In other words, they are claiming bodies of water can bend around, stick to a ball, and show curvature upon their surface, but only at a scale too big for the public to recreate. Then, they are claiming water can ball up and float suspended in air, but only in a reference frame too far for the public to recreate. As for water level, Globe Defenders have actually attempted to completely redefine the term level just to fit with their dogma. The true definition of level is a flat, horizontal plane with no deviation in elevation along its surface. Water always reliably seeks and maintains its own level, and that is why it has been used in spirit levels and construction projects from time immemorial to create perfectly horizontal structures, 
no matter their size. Globe zealots, however, unsatisfied with this obvious truth and clear definition, have attempted to redefine level to instead mean curved. Their globe-friendly version of level means equal heights around a ball when measured from a central point. The fact of the matter is, however, that nobody has ever reached this hypothetical center point of the hypothetical Earth globe, so their redefined term cannot be tested or falsified. Until that day, rest assured there is good reason we call it sea level and not sea curve. How did I beat you? You're too fast. Do you believe that my being stronger or faster has anything to do with my muscles in this place? precision instrument which can only work on a level plain earth, and is an impossible and nonsensical tool for use on a globe. It simultaneously points north and south over a flat surface, and must be held flat to work, yet claims to be pinpointing two constantly moving geomagnetic poles at opposite ends of a spinning sphere originating from a hypothetical molten metal core. If compass needles were actually drawn to the north pole of a globe, the opposing south needle would actually be pointing up and off into outer space. Likewise, observers holding a compass in Antarctica would be at the bottom of the ball, so to show north, the needle would have to point down at their feet. If the so-called south pole in Antarctica were truly the southern pole of a magnet, observers would be able to walk in a circle with their backs to the south pole and have their compass needles show north being in front of them in every direction. This feat has never and will never be achieved, because the so-called South Pole is simply an arbitrary point along the Antarctic ice marked with a red and white barbershop pole and topped with a little metal ball earth. The actual type of magnetism present on earth is similar to a ring magnet found in loudspeakers, which have a central north pole with the opposite south pole being all points along the outer circumference. This perfectly describes the magnetism of our flat Earth, whereas the alleged source of magnetism in the globe model is emitted from a hypothetical molten magnetic core in the center of the ball which they claim conveniently causes both poles to constantly move and thus forever evade independent verification at their two ceremonial poles. trying to do I'm trying to free your mind Neo but I can only show you the door you're the one that has to walk through it I'm the place you picked to hide I'm the thing you left inside I'm the time you never try and you lie
situated directly over the North Pole center of Earth, never moves, night after night, year after year, century after century, with all the other fixed stars remaining fixed in their relative constellations, revolving perfect circles around it. Such circular star trails around an unmoving pole star, seen in time-lapse photos, prove that it is the stars themselves moving, and not the Earth. If Earth was truly a tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball undergoing these multiple contradictory motions through the universe, you would only ever see irregular, random, spiral-shaped star trails, and the night sky would never be the same twice. It would be impossible for constellations to exist whatsoever if Earth was truly performing all these various theoretical motions. was truly a globe, constantly spinning eastwards at over a thousand miles per hour, it stands to reason that helicopters and hot air balloons should be able to simply hover over the surface of the Earth and wait for their destinations to come to them. For example, during the Red Bull Stratosphere dive, Felix Baumgartner, spending three hours ascending over New Mexico, should have landed 2,500 miles west into the Pacific Ocean but instead actually landed a few dozen miles east of the takeoff point. Likewise, vertically fired cannonballs and other projectiles should fall significantly due west on an eastward spinning ball. In actual fact, however, whenever this has been tested, vertically fired cannonballs shoot upwards an average of 14 seconds ascending, 14 seconds descending, and fall back to the ground no more than two feet away from the cannon, sometimes directly back into the muzzle. To account for this problem, Globe Defenders claim that gravity somehow magically and inexplicably drags the entire lower atmosphere of the Earth in perfect synchronization up to some undetermined height where this progressively faster and faster spinning atmosphere gives way to the non-spinning, non-gravitized, non-atmosphere of supposed infinite vacuum space. NASA refuses to answer at what altitude this impossible feat allegedly happens, but the effect such a transition would have on a craft traversing it would be disastrous. by Flat Earth author David Wardlaw Scott, with the modern astronomer there is theoretically neither up nor down, though his experience belies his assertion every time he looks up to the heavens 
or down to the ground. Such aberration of intellect is really to be pitied. The 3rd century philosopher Lacantius was similarly perturbed about the idea, stating, A sphere where people on the other side live with their feet above their heads? Where rain, snow, and hail fall upwards? Where trees and crops grow upside down? And the sky is lower than the ground? The ancient wonder of the hanging gardens of Babylon dwindle into nothing in comparison to the fields, seas, towns, and mountains that pagan philosophers believe to be hanging from the earth without support. Truly, the idea that people are standing, ships are sailing, and planes are flying upside down on certain parts of earth, while others are tilted at 90 degrees and all other impossible angles, is utter absurdity and an affront to common sense. In fact, common sense is the first casualty of globe belief. No child or unindoctrinated man would ever conclude or even conceive if given to their own devices, based on their own personal observations, that Earth was a spinning ball revolving around the sun. When children are indoctrinated from a very early age to abandon their common sense and lived experience of a geocentric plain Earth in favor of this nonsensical, heliocentric globe model taught in schools, a schism occurs in their psyche. No longer can they trust their own senses and experience, and instead must trust information completely contrary to it, taught by supposed experts and authority figures who insist their version of reality is correct. When children see that every adult around them believes wholeheartedly in the spinning globe, and hear that only our ignorant, unscientific ancestors believed otherwise, they readily abandon the empirical evidence of their senses and adopt the prevailing nonsensical model. As stated by Flat Earth author E. Eschini, the one thing the fable of the revolving Earth has done, it has shown the terrible power of a lie. A lie has the power to make a man a mental slave, so that he dares not back the evidence of his own senses to deny the plain and obvious movement of the sun he sees before him, when he feels himself standing on an earth utterly devoid of motion, at the suggestion of someone else he is prepared to accept that he is spinning furiously round, when he sees a bird flying and gaining over the ground, he is prepared to believe that the ground is really traveling a great number of times faster than the bird, and finally, in order to uphold the imagination of a madman, he is prepared to accuse his maker of forming him a censiferous lie. Surveyors, engineers, architects, and builders are never required to factor the supposed curvature of the earth into their projects. Plumb bobs are used to establish plumb vertical datums, with spirit levels then used to establish horizontal datums and lay flat foundations across great expanses. If earth was actually a globe of given proportions, builders would find themselves constantly deviating from both their established vertical and horizontal datum lines. But in reality, canals, railways, bridges, tunnels, and other large projects are always cut and laid horizontally, often over hundreds of miles, without any allowance for curvature, and no deviation from established datums. As stated by surveyor T. Westwood in Earth Review magazine, quote, In leveling, I work from ordnance marks, or canal levels, to get the height above sea level. The puzzle to me used to be, 
that over several miles, each level was and is treated throughout its whole length as the same level from end to end, not the least allowance being made for curvature. The Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Gulf of Suez on the Red Sea, is one clear proof of both the Earth's and water's non-convexity. The canal is a hundred miles long and without any locks, so the water within is an uninterrupted continuation of the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. When it was constructed, the Earth's supposed curvature was not taken into account. It was dug along a horizontal datum line 26 feet below sea level, passing through several lakes from one sea to the other, with the datum line and the water's surface running perfectly parallel over the hundred miles. Another good example is the Dunyang Kunshan Bridge, the longest bridge in the world, just over 102 miles long, which runs parallel to the Yangtze River and connects the Shanghai and Nanjing provinces. This bridge is approximately the same length as the Suez Canal, and was also built without factoring the alleged curvature of the Earth. If Earth was actually a globe 24,900 miles in circumference, spherical trigonometry dictates that the center of both the Suez Canal and the Dunyang Kunshan Bridge would bulge over 1,666 feet higher than either end. Engineer W. Winkler was published in the Earth Review regarding the Earth's supposed curvature, stating, As an engineer of many years' standing, I saw that this absurd allowance is only permitted in school books. No engineer would dream of allowing anything of the kind. I have projected many miles of railways and many more of canals, and the allowance has not even been thought of, much less allowed for. This allowance for curvature means this, that it is 8 inches for the first mile of a canal, and increasing at the ratio by the square of the distance in miles. Thus, a small navigable canal for boats, say 30 miles long, will have, by the above rule, an allowance for curvature of 600 feet. Think of that, and then please credit engineers as not being quite such fools. Nothing of the sort is allowed. We no more think of allowing 600 feet for a line of 30 miles of railway or canal than of wasting our time trying to square the circle. Railroads are another example of large-scale construction projects spanning hundreds or even thousands of miles, working from an established datum line and without deviating for the entire length. The Manchester Ship Canal Company, in an official statement published in Earth Review magazine, confirmed, quote, It is customary in railway and canal constructions for all levels to be referred to a datum which is nominally horizontal and is so shown on all sections. It is not the practice in laying out public works to make allowances for the curvature of the earth. possible that we're living in that Truman Show today. We're living on the flat earth with the dome, the firmament. As we start to look around us, we start to wake up, our eyes open, maybe that third eye opens, we start to understand, wow, this isn't what I thought it was. Maybe instead of being a worthless blob of goo that came from nothing and then developing into apes that were ooing and aahing and then eating bananas like a bunch of idiots, maybe instead of that we actually are the center of the universe. Maybe we are special. In fact, maybe there is unbelievable evidence of creation. But the government has decided to hide that from you. Why?
or can I trust what I'm actually seeing? But Christopher, the earth is a globe. I was told that when I was one years old. They said, look, this is a globe. Isn't it interesting? It's one of the first things that you're actually taught. The earth isn't flat, it's a globe. Even though for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years, they thought that the earth was flat. In fact, when the Bible was penned, they interpreted that the earth was flat. It actually says in Genesis, the actual word of God, it says that a firmament was created, which was the heavens, and below that was the earth and the landmass and the water, and above that was another body of water. But a lot of people miss it. Oh, but Christopher, we have all these images of outer space that show that the earth is a sphere. Really? Where do the images come from? NASA. Oh, you mean the same NASA that is our government, our secretive breakaway government that hasn't been back to the moon since the 1960s. That NASA? Have you ever seen it with your own eyes? Oh, no, Christopher, but pilots, they'll, they'll tell us that, uh, uh, that the Earth is a sphere. If they have high enough altitude, they can see it's, see it's a sphere. Okay, well then how come no, none of the electronics account for curvature of the Earth when you're flying a plane? None of the engineering of bridges and train tracks buildings, all kinds of infrastructure that goes for miles and hundreds and maybe thousands of miles, none of it accounts for, in its actual engineering blueprints, for the curvature of the Earth. I mean, if I was building a giant bridge in Key West for hundreds of miles, wouldn't I have to account for the curve? Or is it possible there's not a curve and that we've been lied to for a reason? Again, I'm not saying it's a flat Earth. I'm just saying they're covering it up. I'm just saying don't trust the government, don't trust NASA, think for yourself. Do you really think that NASA would show live imagery of the alleged moon landing when there was probably a 90% chance of death of every single astronaut that was allegedly landing on the moon? Do you really think they would live stream that failure to the American public? No way! Did you know JFK, I'll have Alex pull this image, in his war room while he was still alive before you know what happened to him by the deep state? You know the map behind him in the war room? Flat Earth map.
I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. This is just like the Cold War when we were fighting against Russia to put a man allegedly on the moon. We've just never been back since. And they lost all the moon landing footage. I mean, does that make any sense to you guys at all? Why? Like, seriously, answer that question. We, we haven't been back? Don't you think it'd be a good idea that we go back there just to kind of check things out? Aren't there things to learn on the moon? So what are they hiding from us? I go back to the Antarctic Treaty where every uh, country in the world, all the major superpowers, have a treaty that has been in place for longer than 50 years, I think it is, which basically prevents any civilian from going to the Antarctic area. Why is that? Are you familiar with any other treaty that's actually sustained the test of time for that long without being broken and there being an eventual war? So what's the motive for that treaty? Is it possible that we're living in that Truman Show today? We're living on the flat earth with the dome, the firmament. As we start to look around us, we start to wake up, our eyes open, maybe that third eye opens, we start to understand, wow, this isn't what I thought it was. Maybe instead of being a worthless blob of goo that came from nothing and then developing into apes that were ooing and aahing and then eating bananas like a bunch of idiots, maybe instead of that, we actually are the center of the universe. Maybe we are special. In fact, maybe there is unbelievable evidence of creation but the government has decided to hide that from you why why is there so much misinformation why is there a giant disinformation campaign going on right now when it comes to things like flat earth why are people being hired by like Disney Walt Disney you know the mainstream media giants so that huge youtubers like Logan Paul and others can discredit it if it's such a ridiculous idea and a conspiracy theory, then why do they need to discredit it? Why do they need to censor it, more importantly? Filter through search results now, you can't even find critical thinking and information on this topic.
happens when it actually gets out. The kind of restructuring of society and the system that truthers are looking for, that people know we need, is what can happen and what will happen and what must happen if this truth gets out. Because this is huge. It is the truth. I guarantee anyone who's never heard of this before, look into the flat earth. The earth is flat, just like it appears on the horizon. The earth is motionless, just as you feel motionless. Everything in the sky revolves around us, just as it appears if you look up and use your own eyes, your own senses. Everything that your senses tell you is what's happening. But you've been fed a false system. You've been shown CGI images with a ball earth with a horizon that curves. You've been shown more CGI images with a ball earth that spins. You've been shown planets that spin like billiard balls around each other in many different directions at many different speeds simultaneously. You've been shown all these things in CGI format. You've had Freemasons lie to you and tell you they've seen it for themselves, but you've never seen it for yourself. You've just been lied to and shown pictures, and you believe those. It's not science. Science, in fact, shows that the Earth is flat and motionless, and there are hundreds upon hundreds of proofs and experiments that have been repeated throughout history for hundreds of years, but you haven't been taught them in school, because they don't want you to be taught that in school. They show you a spinning globe on your first day and tell you that gravity keeps water and buildings and people stuck to the bottom of that thing, and they repeat it until you believe it, your parents believe it, your grandparents believe it. 500 years ago, people were believing it. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. <laughs>